Hi, I'm Morgan from How To Celiac and today I'm going to teach you how to make the Australian and New Zealand specialty lamingtons. Lamingtons are a light sponge cake that have been iced and rolled in coconut and usually served with jam and cream. And they are so easy to make gluten free, so let's get into it. Right, to make the sponge you will need 125 grams of butter, 150 grams of caster sugar, 4 eggs, 250 grams of gluten free self raising flour, 40 grams of corn flour, 1 teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of xanthan gum, and half a cup of milk. To get started, let's turn the oven on to 180 degrees Celsius and line a baking tin with baking paper. I like to cut the corners out of my baking paper so it fits in the tin a little bit more nicely and doesn't crinkle the sponge. To start off, let's combine the softened butter with the caster sugar in a large bowl and beat that until it's light and fluffy. Once that's done, we're gonna add in one egg and then whisk until it's combined and then repeat with the rest of the eggs. By the end of this, you should have a lovely smooth and pale mixture and try not to leave the eggshell in there like I did. In another bowl we're going to combine the gluten free self raising flour, corn flour, xanthan gum and baking powder and give it a light mix so they combine. Then we're going to pour half the dry mixture into the egg mixture and fold them in gently. Now we want to be folding so we don't break those very precious air bubbles that make a sponge a sponge. So be careful not to overbeat this part. Then we'll add in half the milk and repeat the folding process. And after that you're going to add in the rest of the flour, fold again and then add in the rest of the milk. and you'll know you've done it right if you've got a nice, smooth, airy cake batter. Then we're going to pour the cake batter into the prepared tin. And smooth out the top as best you can. Right, that's ready to go in the oven now for 30 minutes. You'll know it's ready when you can insert a skewer into the middle and it comes out clean. After the 30 minutes, turn off the oven and leave the door slightly ajar for 10 minutes. This will stop the sponge from sinking so much. After the 10 minutes, you can take it out of the tin and put it on a cooling rack. For the chocolate icing, you'll need 50 grams of melted butter, one cup of icing sugar, half a cup of cocoa powder, and a quarter of a cup of milk. For the strawberry icing, you will need one cup of icing sugar and three tablespoons of strawberry jelly crystals. You'll also need two cups of desiccated coconut. So we're gonna make the chocolate one first. You wanna add the icing sugar, melted butter, and cocoa powder to a bowl, and whisk that to combine. Once that's combined as best you can, go ahead and add in the milk and mix until you've got a really smooth consistency. If it's still a bit thick for your liking, you can go ahead and add another quarter cup of milk. You want it to be quite a thin batter because if it's too thick, it'll be hard to dip the sponges in. To make the strawberry icing, dissolve the jelly crystals in a quarter of a cup of hot water. Then you want to add in sifted icing sugar and mix again until it's all combined. Carefully add in water until it has a crepe batter consistency, one that will be easy to dip sponges in. 
When the sponge is completely cooled, you can cut off the edges. I like to cut off the sides so that the icing can be absorbed more into the sponge. Then cut the sponge into 16 squares. If you'd like to, you can cut off the tops to make them perfect squares, but if you don't mind a little bit of a lumpy lamington, then don't bother. Then we're going to take the cooled sponge and dip it into our mixtures. So some recipes will ask you to do this with a skewer by sticking the sponge onto a skewer and then dipping it in. I find that with a gluten free cake it doesn't hold too well and will quite often fall to pieces on it so I like to use my fingers. It does get a little messy but you know it's a lot more fun. Repeat with the rest of the squares until they're all finished and then set aside for 30 minutes. And here is the final product. I like to serve mine cut in half with fresh cream and jam in the middle. These will keep up to three days in a sealed container, but if you've got cream in them, best to eat them on the day. I hope you enjoyed my recipe on how to make lamingtons. As always, the recipe is in the description below. And if you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Here's the cat. Okay, have a great day.